آله وصحبه ومن ولاه اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم أن يعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشى ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي Today we're going to start the 21st juz of the Quran and this is for those of you who memorize or inshallah all of you Allah will give it to you one of the toughest questions in an exam when you are when you have an exam of the whole Quran that's when you become a hafidha is they will tell you start the 21st juz if you know where to start the, the 21st and the 16 you know the Quran and the 24th also right because that's in the middle of the surah. So basically what we're going to be doing, we're going to be covering the, uh, probably a page and a half and next week, inshallah, we will finish it. Bi-idhnillah. And then we will go to another surah. I'll see what Allah subhanahu ta'ala will open. The, uh, we need to learn all the Quran, but we'll see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open for us. So in the beginning, again, surah Al-Ankabut, we said it's the surah of the test. Surah that we all gonna be tested and the example is in front of you subhanallah since we started Surah Al-Ankabut how many tests we have seen as a as an ummah individually Allah knows so we will be tested the fact we said la ilaha illallah we will be tested the, simply it's a litmus paper Allah will show are you truthful am I truthful am I a real believer am I not am I truthful I am liar and then we said the tests will be from myself, number one. I need to struggle against my nafs. I need to do hijrah, move from where I am to a better stage with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is your family. There is your people. And then there is another the, the community. In the 21st, you think the theme changed. The theme didn't change. Is just a different way of a test. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here talking to Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam. And he says, وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ yeah, This is way more. Just a second. وَقَارُونَ مَثَلُوا Here we are. طيب, here we are. So this is the beginning of the 21st. وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْهُمْ وَقُولُوا أَمَنَّا بِالَّذِي أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا وَأُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ وَإِلَاهُنَا وَإِلَاهُ وَاحِدٌ وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ Read the English one. And when you read the Quran, this is the seventh class. So inshallah, now you are becoming a little bit, little bit more familiar. When you read the Quran, you know Arabic or you don't know Arabic? This is what you need to ask yourself the following questions. When you read a verse, read don't go to the next verse unless you have answered this question. What is this first verse is talking about? What is the subject? Allah talking to people of Lut, Allah talking to Rasul This one is talking to you and me. That's number one. طيب, what is he telling me? Do, don't, you are this, you are that. That's the second question you're going to ask. The more you know about at least the meaning, the more you come back and read, and the more you read the tafsir, you more attend something like that, you will get very familiar. The Quran themes are repeated. Different way, different language, different verses, but it is repeated. And this is one of the repeated themes. Now the test with whom applies to us, with the non-Muslims. Because that's what the verse is saying. وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ Do not argue with the people of the book. Really? Nothing? I say nothing? إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ In the best way. I'm going to translate and then I'm going to comment. Except in the best way. وَقُولُوا Say, meaning to them. Amanna Believe. بِالَّذِي أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا What has been revealed to us, which is the Qur'an. وَأُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ means the Torah and the Injil. So this is to the people of the book. This is not to the kuffar. Now, وَإِلَاهُنَا وَإِلَاهُكُمْ وَاحِدٌ And our Lord, our Rabb, our Ilah is and yours is one. And now again translating, وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ And we are submitting to him. What does that mean? This, these are principles. How do you debate? Whether you debate with the people of the book, whether you debate with your friend, whether you debate with somebody disagree with you. The first one is إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنِ 
You know what's illa billati hiya ahsan? Someone looks at you and says, you know nothing. Some people can do that, right? Illati hiya ahsan, you say, you know what? You could be right with a smile. And I'll tell you what Allah taught me. And if you get upset, which is easily done because somebody come and tell you in your face, then you will not tujadil, you will not argue, you need to leave because you will not do any justice. So remember the word ahsan, and there was a beautiful discussion about this verse with the Sheikh Sha'rawi. He said he used ahsan in the Quran repeatedly, but in different ways. Ahsan meaning the best way. Not even the best, but better even than what they are telling you. Number two rule for debate, and I didn't say argue, I say debate. You need to have knowledge. You don't have knowledge, don't say anything. Don't say to any woman upstairs, if she's praying different than you, you are praying wrong. Guess what? Maybe she's praying in a different school of thought. Unless you really know, and for sure, and you have the evidence, then yes. Three, look at this one. Who can read it and tell me? What Allah says, وَقُولُوا say, أَمَنَّا بِالَّذِي أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا وَأُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ We believe in what have been revealed to us and revealed to you. What are you saying to them? Common ground. Common ground. Don't start debating somebody with the word commonly said, which is, you're wrong. You lost them. You lost them. Because immediately you will get irritated. Nobody will not get irritated unless the Rasulullah On the contrary, you say, you know what? I'll tell you. You believe in the books. I believe in my book and your books. What did I just say? I made the other person said, oh. وَإِلَاهُنَا وَإِلَاهُكُمْ واحد. My Lord and yours is one. Now look at the last one. And Allah says, وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ he didn't say, وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُؤْمِنُونَ. Why? Because that's the question to everybody. Are you a Muslim or you're a Mu'min? Both, right? Of course. Are you a real Muslim? What does this word mean? Which is the meaning here? What does the word real Muslim mean? Huh? Submission. submission to Allah. How many in this room says, I submit to the will of Allah? Show me hands. Really? Are you ready to the question? <laughs> when I say I submit to the will of Allah, if I go home today after this class and there is no house, I'm going to say, Qaddar Allah ma shafa. Allah decree and whatever Allah decree will happen. That's Islam. The real meaning of Islam when you submit to the will of Allah. We all know submission. We all know the translation beautifully. But the question is, understand the Quran, live the Quran. Are, am I, are you, are we, in general as a nation, individually as people, really submit to the will of Allah? Don't you say, why me? Why not? I'm not convinced. Convince me this is not fair. And this is what he's saying here to the people that differ with you. I submit to the will of Allah. In meaning, there's so many meanings in this word. Meaning, you are not supposed to, con to convince the person in front of you. Your job, my job, our job is not to convince people. My job is what? Deliver the message in the best way with knowledge. If you are involved in interfaith, not only dialogue, but in interfaith conferences, big, huge one, you come and sit on that table or on that stage with only one knee, is show them the truth in you. And that's it. I remember very well, this was one of the toughest questions I got. And we were actually a panel I was, I was here, there was even a Baha'i after me, there was two kinds of Christians and was the Jewish. And the question came from the audience. And she looked and says, this is what everybody on that stage, do you believe in Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad? And in me, I start smiling. And it didn't come from a Muslim. 
So the, the Jews, which was a rabbi, she, it was a woman conference. And then they put her on the corner. The Christian looked at her and says, do you believe in Jesus? And she said, no. And then the Christian comes and I was waiting for me, you know, alhamdulillah, because that's what it is. I'm, I'm not saying it's me. That's what Allah taught me. And then the Christian, the same story. So they came to me. I looked at both of them. I remember very well. There was more than 400 people. It was in a church that year. Because every year it moves from one place of worship to the other. I looked at them and said, listen, ladies, if I don't believe in Jesus and I don't believe in Moses, I am not a Muslim. Now, the general meaning of Islam. So when you argue with somebody, and this is for the non-Muslims, but I am talking about in general, because I see it a lot upstairs. I see it a lot. You comment on people's act of worship, and in me, I was like, leave her alone. It's a different opinion. Don't jump on people, especially if you don't have knowledge. If you have the knowledge, then that's a different story in a different way. So that's the first one. And look at the next one, and you need now to learn the connection. Now the talk to Rasul So my test, your test, is when people argue with you. Because that's my nafs is speaking. I need to make it in the best way, and I need to know when to withdraw. If you know when to withdraw, you will always win. When you stay calm, and then you say, you know what, I delivered the message, Allah will change the hearts and move. Now he's talking to Rasul because now the test to him. And every word that I and you will not accept, they said it about him. And as we said, as we sent to you the book, meaning we send it to the people before you. And then he's telling Rasul those who have the book, the Jews and the Christians will believe because they see it in them, in there. In the book, in the in the in, in the uh, Bible, there is a Rasul Allah Clear. I believe in Torah, and I brought the Injil. And in the Injil, it says there is a messenger that's going to come after me. And his name is Ahmed, one of the names of Rasul So Allah is telling Rasul he's calming him down now. Because the people argued with him, and the people mocked him, and the people irritated him. He didn't show it, but anybody of us, and that's to me, and to you. And zanna ilayka al-kitab. Some people will believe, and some people will not believe. And the people who doesn't believe are kafir. Simple clear, do not sugarcoat or not sugarcoat. You believe in Allah, let's talk. You don't believe in Allah, may Allah guide you. End of the story. I, I was with one day with, the, you probably all know him, Dr. Dakar Naik, right? It's amazing, amazing. And this is a statement, I heard it from him before that meeting. And I said, I remember very well, this was 15 years ago. And, and people, somebody asked him, how do you guide people to Islam? He said, and they don't believe in Allah. That, he said, this is very easy. He said, because what do you want them to say? La ilaha illallah. Right? You want them to negate and then to affirm. They come to you already 50% is done because they don't believe. Did you get the point? That's hikmah. They don't believe in Allah anyway. 50% is done. So Allah so here is saying, kafirun. Those are kuffar. I can't change it. If they don't believe in Allah, they are kafir. But don't lose hope because you don't know how they will die. Allah knows how people die. And he, that's what he's saying. The person who rejected the Quran in general are those who don't believe in Allah. Now look at the next one because that's going to help me. That's the hujjah. That's the proof. And Allah is telling the Rasul, did you ever knew how to read? Did you ever know how to write? At all. So what's for me living in this day and age? What is this going to, where do I need this? How many of you have heard the word that the Quran was written by Muhammad? Muhammad's book, they call it. Have you heard that? How do you answer? No, it is not. He said, yeah, it is. 
he brought it. And you say, no, he didn't. Many people don't know he doesn't read, he doesn't know, he didn't know. Not only doesn't, he didn't. He negated it, ma kunta, meaning before the Quran was revealed, you didn't know how to read or write. How can somebody don't read and write? Like you don't know Arabic. Can you write a book in Arabic now? I don't know Urdu. Can I write a book in Urdu? This is for me and you when I am tested by proving my point to people and we go through this daily and the point you want to prove your right, your opinion, your children, the way you live, whatever, whatever, right? Get the evidence and make sure you have the hujjah, we say. You're eloquent in what you are saying. If you are not eloquent and you're going to get upset and you're going to start, you know how we are, we get very emotional, then don't do it because you lose your point. The moment you start shouting, you lost your point, even if you are 100% correct. And we, in general, people of emotions, regardless where we come from, right? We need to calm it down. And remember, this is what Allah is saying to Rasulullah. You didn't. You didn't know how to read or write. And then, the miracle of the Qur'an. Because the argument was about the Qur'an. He wrote it. He brought it. Allah says, no, you don't, need, you don't know how to read and write. Rather, and now this question to everybody here and everybody listening to me. And Allah defined the Qur'an in this way. You all can read it, right? بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي صُدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ وَمَا يَجْحَدُ بِآيَاتِنَا إِلَّا الظَّالِمُونَ What is the Qur'an? First part, we all know. Second part, is it you? And he says, آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ It's verses and it is signs. Clear. And you need to learn, each one of you, depends who you are, what is your background? What do you normally do? You need to, re to learn a couple of the signs inside the Quran. You're talking to a physician, talk about the creation of human being in the Quran. You're talking to an engineer, a geologist, talk about the creation of the earth. I mean, the amount of miracles in the Quran, it will blow your brain. I had a Muslim physician. She... I don't know what happened to her and who put this in her head. And she said it was written by Muhammad. This is a Muslim. And I said, fine, you're a physician, right? She's also an ob -GYN. And she said, I, yes. I said, okay, go and read Surah Al-Hajj. And read it and come back to me and tell me this was written by Muhammad. So ayatun, there is signs. There's a lot of signs in the Quran. You know what's our problem? What is our problem? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't read. And when we read, we just read. I don't go and read with the, with the goal. There's many goals when you read the Quran. The reward, get close to Allah. It's Allah's word. But for me, living in this day and age, living with all the challenges around me, I need to learn my Quran. If you spend every single day 15 minutes, one verse. I'm not going to say the whole Quran, memorize, tajweed. I'm going to say one verse. Every single day, one verse. If you don't know Arabic, read the translation. If you know Arabic, read what the words mean. And just pick up one Quran, one tafsir, one commentary, and just read the, the, the overall. And then think about it. Every single day. In a month, you will finish 30. In a year, you will finish 360. You finished Surah Al-Baqarah. And that's what it says. The miracle of the Quran, many of you probably don't pay attention to this, is the Quran that is in front of me, is the, the same Quran I have from my great-grandmother. I have it still, which is about 100 years old. It's exactly the same. One. And the other one, which is only, only unique to us Muslims, is that we are the only ummah who the Quran is not only written, but the Quran is memorized. And that's why there is a time is going to come when this is going to be lifted. There is no more Quran. You can't come to the masjid and pick it up. But there is people who has it in their heart. 
are you one of them? And if you are not, why not? Have you tried? Did you start? Why not? We memorize so many things. So many, th right? So many things. It depends where is our focus. May Allah forgive me how many books of medicine I memorized. There's nothing wrong with that, but not on the expense of the book of Allah. So two miracles in the Quran is the scientific, the linguistic, many, but also that it is the book that is fi suduri ladina utul ilm. You carry it in your heart. Do you know what that means? Sometimes it blows my mind. It's the words of Allah. He put it in your heart, in mine. Why? Why? What kind of Fadlullah Ya is the grace of Allah upon you? Have we started? Do we put an effort? No. I get on, I sit on the internet for how long? On the social media for how long? On the news for how long? Entertaining people for how long? Going out with my friends for how long? But I don't have time. SubhanAllah, I had this discussion this afternoon. Somebody was saying, you know, they are very busy at work and they feel they are not doing what they should do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And somebody answered and says, work is ibadah. And I said, hold on a second. It's very dangerous, slippery road, Hada. If this deen was number one in your life, Allah, Allah, you will find all the time in the world. Because anything that is very important for us, we give it our efforts, our thinking, our blood, if you want to use the word. So he's telling him, don't worry. The wrongdoers, basically those who don't believe and those who do not practice and follow what Allah, because they're doing wrong to themselves. Allah does not need my salah. Allah does not need your hijab. Allah does not need my zakah or my dua or anything. And you know the famous hadith, which is, yeah, the whole ins, the whole humanity and the whole jinn, they were all, all of them were on the so pious, like they all have the most pious heart, the uh, sovereignty of Allah will not increase. Nothing more than when somebody put their, uh, their uh, index in the ocean and come out. So when I pray, Allah doesn't need my prayer. I need it. When I read Quran, memorize Quran, understand the Quran, that's what he's telling him. And look at the next one. Of course, the argument. Argument is the biggest challenge. This is repeated also in the, why not signs we see? You know how the scholars responded? I really loved it when I was reading this. They said every prophet came in with a book and a sign. True? Sayyidina Musa came in with Torah. What sign he had? The stick, right? I hope you know. Alhamdulillah. Unless you're too quiet today. That's okay. The stick. Type. Sayyidina Isa came in with Bible. What did he bring with it? What's, this, what's the sign? Many. But one, the, one of the most famous ones. That he cured. He cured the person who doesn't speak and the person who has vitiligo. Something they see, not with the Rasul. Why? Have you ever thought? Yani Allah cannot bring a stick with the Rasul. Or Allah SWT cannot make a Rasul cure everybody who's sick. Why is the Quran? The book that will never change to the day of judgment. The book that will not change to the day of judgment. And that's his miracle. They say the miracle in the Quran, the Quran itself and what it has. And that's what he's, so they say, why didn't they send a, a sign that we can see it? And he said, look at the answer. Imagine that somebody says, why are you doing this way and this way? How will I and you respond? What did he say? Signs with Allah and I am just a clear, Warner, you see me. Did you see the point? And then he said, and this is Allah is responding. Isn't it enough for you you have the Quran? Isn't it enough for you you have the Quran? That question is for you and me. 
How many books you have read? Books, whether it's you have to read or you love to read or to enjoy to read. And what about the Quran? Oh, let me cream. Is it enough for them? We sent down. He, did, he didn't say the word Quran in the whole thing. And he's all talking about the Quran. Ayatin bayinat. Oh, let me cream. I'm sorry. Anzalna alayka al kitab yutla alayhim. The book that's being recited to them. Change your relationship with the Quran, my beautiful sisters. Allah will not live this the ummah that we are living in, all these tests we are going in, unless we go back to our book. As, as the, many scholars will tell you, nothing will bring back this ummah. Make, nothing will make this ummah back to it, its glory, other than what made its glory in the beginning. And what made its glory in the beginning? What? What changed the Muslims? What changed the Kuffar? What changed Sayyidina Umar? That's the answer for everybody. What changed Sayyidina Umar? Sayyidina Umar went to kill his sister Fatima. You all know the story, right? What did she do? She did not even let him sit. She says, you're najis. You're impure. He slapped her. And you, now you can imagine Sayyidina Umar when he gets upset, right? And he was not even a Muslim yet. What did she do? Let him listen to the Quran. Taha. Five or four or five verses. And he became a Muslim. How many times you've read Taha? What did it do to us? That's what I'm saying. The test you and I will go every go through every single day. Nothing will make me go through it. You go to counselor, you go whatever, you take medication, you talk to everybody. Nothing will work as the book of Allah. When I know what I am reading, and when I live it, and when I understand it, that's what he was saying. Isn't enough for them? Alayhi Allahu bi kafin abda. He used this always this way of asking. Isn't Allah enough for you? We say yes, really. The question is for everybody. Is it really Allah is enough for me in my daily life or I want this or that? Or... And then he says, isn't enough for them? We send them the book. And he described it. It's a book full of loving mercy. I don't feel it. Do you feel it when you open the Quran and says, this is Rahma? No. Why? Because I didn't spend time. Even for those who memorize, we memorize, but we do not understand. Rahma wa dhikra li uli al-albab. And then, how do you end up your argument? This is when you know you're right. You know it doesn't matter if you win in this dunya or not. It doesn't matter if they say you're weak or not. And your goal is not to show people you're successful. Look what he said. And this is the only one in the Quran. The only one in the Quran. Bayni wa baynakum shahida. Usually it's shahida and bayni wa baynakum. Because now he's debating with them. He says, you know what? Allah is between you and me. If when you read the Quran this way, you feel it. You know what I'm saying? This is this is a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa being argued by the kuffar and they're calling him every single name you did it you wrote it all this thing and Allah is telling him just tell them Allah is the witness between you between you and me is Allah witness and it's your choice that's exactly what he said he knows what are you saying what you believe what you are, what's inside you and what's outside this is how you need, and this is applies to your children. Now it's going to come to the painful one. When your child doesn't pray, and he's not a child anymore, he's becoming 16 or 17, went to college, and subhanAllah, and you're going to say, you know what? Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I didn't teach you well. Say it. It's okay. Right? Maybe I didn't know more than what I, I didn't know what I should know. But I'm telling you right now. And Allah is our witness. And if you chose not to follow the path of Allah, you're the loser. That's exactly what he's telling him. And that's how, this is how we debate, because this page is all about debate. 
is about debate with the non-Muslim, debate with the Muslims who, does, who make fun of you. How many people make fun of us? You are this or you are that, right? Or how many people we make fun of? May Allah forgive us. The response, knowledge, rely on Allah. Allah will give you victory, nobody else. And if you don't want to choose it, I cannot do that. And part of the argument is the next one. Okay, you're, you're scaring me, bring it. That's exactly what they said to Rasul. You're scaring me, there is Jahannam. You're scaring me, there is death, bring it. What is what he's going to say? Look at it. It's also repeated in the Quran, the shortest. Okay, come on in. Bring it. Destroy us. We don't care. Right? Sometimes you hear it, may Allah, may Allah make it easy for the parents. Sometimes you hear it from your children. When you tell them, I want to see you in Jannah. I, I, I don't care. It's very painful, by the way. But what can I do? That's my test. And they rush you, hasten you, bring it. And look at Allah's name here. He didn't say his name, but he is telling you. Allah, one of his names is what? Al-Halim. Forbearing. What Allah will get from punishing me? Can Allah punish me right now? Of course he can. Can he punish us all? Of course. Can he punish what we are seeing? Yes, we can. Right? But Allah, no. Because that's one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Halim. Allah's name is forbearing. And this is one of the, a lot of dua you need to make to yourself. I make it to myself. Ya Allah, make me forbearing. Give it to me. Forbearing meaning, meaning you don't respond right away. You don't revenge right away. And especially when you're able to. Rather, wait. And Allah is capable. And look at this one and remember the earthquakes that happens recently. And it's going to come suddenly and they don't feel it. Very recently, somebody says, you know what, we have another hour and a half to get home um, uh, to pray. So let's, let's drive and go home and pray home. And there was a possibility of praying also in a good place. And the answer was, I don't know if I'm living. If I get a car accident and die, yeah, and I want to meet Allah and I already prayed. You don't know when, when, when Allah, you have, you have seen, you're seeing it. You're seeing it around you every single day. I'm not trying to scare anyone. It's reality. You turn on the TV and you just see what you see. It's all one disaster after the other. And Allah is capable. That's why don't delay your tawbah. Don't delay your act of worship. Don't delay running back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't worry about other people. Don't worry about other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them. And then Allah says, Jahannam is very close. He used the, the term muhita. You know what's muhita? Like the, the garage now around us. They say muhit, meaning surrounding me. It's very close. And Allah says, you want the punishment? It, Jahannam is around you all over. But we are not seeing it. And then he says here, and I will stop here just because of the time. This is one of the most painful, scary way of describing the punishment of Jahannam. And Allah said it two places, one in Zumar and one here. On the punishment, may Allah protect us, Ya Rabbi Ameen. But just to understand the book of Allah. When you are stuck in a place, and imagine fire, imagine fire, because it is fire. And the fire is not coming from the sides, because you still can look up. No, the fire will come from above and from below. And in layers. That's what he's saying. يَخْشَاهُمُ الْعَذَابُ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ وَمِنْ تَحْتِ أَرْجُلِهِمْ Why? And Allah says, this is what you did. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala need to scare me. I need, not you. I need to be scared. Because when I am scared, I will take actions. I'll change. And then when he scares me so much, look at this, look at the next one. Ya ibadi. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is loving, merciful beyond your imagination. He's talking about those who mocked about the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. Then he talks to you and me and says, my servants, 
يعني put ياء for those of you who know عربي هذه لأنه extra love وفيها مد يا عبادي you can't practice your deen people are making fun of you move إن أرضي واسعة my land is my earth is vast you think this city is not good for your deen move you think this place is good for your deen stay and don't make anything else above Allah فإياي فعبدون the people come and then he gives you the end and I will stop here and then we will end next week بإذن الله كل نفس دائقة الموت I need to remember this reality every single day nothing will change me unless I remember I'm dying unless I know I'm going unless I know this is not going to stay how long we will live 70 or 80 or 100 and then how many this in the counting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a fraction of a fraction كل نفس دائقة الموت when you are lazy I'm lazy in obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember death because it's very close just think of a minute minute right you're in the grave and they closed it and you're alone the idea itself gives me anxiety then get up then obey Allah then get ready for it and then he makes you smile and I leave you with a smile because I didn't want to scare you I think I scared you enough today right this is how he ended and then it's going to be a completely different topic next week that's what he wants from me what does he want from me Believe, we all believe. Walillah, alhamd. Alhamdulillah. You don't know what this means, but we should. When you walk in the streets and you see all these people are not. I have to finish it because it's getting very close to the salah. And here, one of the um, descriptions of Jannah, you have mansions. Al Ghuraf is not rooms, it's mansions, flowing rivers under it. Ni'mah, who's going to get it? The workers. What a reward, but I need to work. Being patient, struggle, go through the, the, the test that Allah put me in in the way that pleases Him. And put the Akhirah as your goal. Put Allah as your goal. Everything else in dunya becomes easier. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, as He said in Surah Al Zumah, He looks at me and you and says, You deserve it. Absolutely, you worked hard. You know when you say to your, you really worked hard and you deserve it? That's what I want Allah to say to me. And whatever hard work we are doing is nothing for what he will give me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those people. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabi tasliman kathira. Next week the same time inshaAllah. And we will finish it bi idhnillah. Jazakumallahu khayran. If we can please... Carefully and beautifully um, empty this room so the men 